party with your host, Dustin Ripka. Hello and welcome to Sex Party. I'm your host, Dustin Ribka. With me on the show this week for her third appearance is friend of mine, friend of the show, Madison Card. Madison is an artist. She's an actor. She's a stripper. We're going to talk about the strip club. What's been going on at the strip club these last couple of years? Uh, there's a lot of trends that have uh, been going on in the strip club. She is going to tell an insane story uh, or two about uh, things that she's recently seen in the strip club. I am going to tell an insane story about Las Vegas and a strip club experience I had at a bachelor party, which I will probably get in trouble for. I've never told this story. Um, we talk about some of the trends, like the light up butt plugs that strippers have been wearing. We also go into, you know, uh, maybe how you could approach talking to a stripper about any extras they may offer or something like that. Uh, trust me, just go with it. Um, you'll learn a ton. Um, we also talk about what Project 2025 could possibly do to strip clubs and pornography. Don't worry, we don't get too political. We do talk about a Biden-Harris light up uh butt plug that's a uh, merchandise gold um at the end of the episode madison talks about what she is up to on only fans so without further ado please enjoy my conversation with madison card this week's conversation, conversation. Madison Card, welcome back. It's your third time on Sex Party. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, of course. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, but, you know, for the people that that maybe they didn't see the first two appearances, you know, maybe they are passed out in a dumpster somewhere for the last 18 months, or maybe they haven't uh, gotten out so of bed. So they live in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or they're just trying to avoid all podcasts and all TV and whatever. Um, could you talk a little bit about who you are, and what you do to, to bring them up to speed? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Madison Card. I'm an actor, model, dancer, stripper. Uh, I also love to cook. That's a little random, but uh, I'm a real person <laughs> too outside of all the art. But yeah, I'm pretty much just an entertainer, artist of all mediums. Yeah, I mean, artists are real people, too. Strippers are I real know, people, crazy. too. Like, people need to realize that, yeah. What a concept. Um, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's too much for some people's brains, though. Trust me, these Instagram comments are wild. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and yeah, I mean, you have sort of become, like, our go-to official, unofficial, like, strip club um, uh, commentator, if you will, right? Like I'm the honored. person we, we go to, like we want to check what's going on uh, in the strip club. You know, you come to mind first. Um, and I know last time we talked, we had to fuck. I mean, everybody loved that episode. And <laughs> I encourage everybody, not right now. Do not go back and, and listen <laughs> or watch right now. After this is over, you're more than welcome, right? But finish this episode. It'll be a banger. Trust me. Um but you know what? What is it like in the strip club right now? I, I mean, is the, are are the weird, freaky politics of the world affecting things? Are people still like getting loose, ripping shots, throwing money everywhere? Is it still a horny place to be? People are still ripping shots for sure. Um, <laughs> typically, I like to have the policy of like no politics in the club because number one, it's going to affect your money. You can either pick the fight or pick their wallet, right? Mm. Nice. Most of the time I try to go for the wallet, but every now and again, it's hard to hold my tongue and real Madison comes out and uh, my stripper side hides. But lately <laughs> customers have been talking about politics a lot. Um, it's very uncomfortable. It's very weird. I will say, I think since the pandemic strip clubs have kind of taken a downward turn because people have gone to the internet for only fans, which is great. Um, however, I am seeing that kind of return a little bit back to normal. I'm now dancing in California, which is a lot different than dancing in Colorado. And I'm about to start travel dancing. So we'll maybe have to do an episode four on all the different states because it is state by state. It's very different yeah. everywhere. Um, but yeah, no, customers are saying really weird things. And uh, <laughs> I think the Trumpies are getting empowered to be loud. I don't think they're ma the majority, but I do think they're louder. 
um, it's uncomfortable. I definitely got in like a little bit of a tiff the other day. And I like told my manager, I was like, I'm going home because I will punch someone. And then I cried in the office for like five minutes. And then I left <laughs> with my bag, like a bad bitch, but it, it gets to me sometimes it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, why it's, I mean, it's one thing in a bar, but like, why are you talking yes. about politics in this? Show? I mean, because well, I mean, what are they saying? Like, oh, this is so great, but I'm done. I'm never coming back if Trump wins. Or I don't understand. Like, what? Right. What's the- and you would think that, like, regulars at a strip club would understand that if Trump gets elected, strip clubs probably won't be as common and they won't get to go to their, like, regular bar, which that's a whole other issue if you go to a bar sure. for overpriced beer and not for boobies. Like, <laughs> I digress. But it they're not even talking about strip clubs in the context of Trump. They're talking about like abortion and that Mm. gay people don't deserve rights. And for people who are new here, I'm a lesbian and a stripper. So that's always interesting. I don't really Mm. disclose that I'm gay at work because it would probably affect my money. Like some people know, some people don't. Um, But I literally, I hate saying this word, but I'm going to say it in context. I literally got called a faggot the other day at work, not because my customer knew I was a lesbian, but because he knew I didn't want to vote for Trump, which was just so out of pocket. And I was like, do you feel empowered to say things like that to normal people? Like it feels like the grabber by the pussy thing all over it. Yeah. 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 And who's talking about abortion in a strip club? Like you're not having sex with these dancers. They don't want to sleep with you. Like not relevant at all. Right. I had a dude the other day that was like, I'm a father. Like you're literally killing babies. And I was like, so you're uneducated in what abortion actually looks like. And he was like, I'll take their babies. I was like, okay, dude, go off. Like dad of the year, you're at a strip club. Like calm down, dude. (laughs) It's sort of a weird flex in the strip club. Yeah. I feel like if you're not talking with your money, just shut the fuck up. And he wasn't tipping. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's saving up for all the babies he's going to adopt. Oh, um, right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, that is, that is very strange. Um, you know, because, you know, on your, on your social media content, you know, there's been, yeah, I've seen, and this is why I asked to come back. This is why I wanted to come back for a while, but then I saw yeah. this certain, certain clip and I'm like, oh shit. Um, and I sent you a message, but like, you know, with all that said, it's still, it's still, it's still, and you're in California, so I'm sure yes. maybe it's, I don't know if it's wilder than Colorado or if it's the same, but like there's shit that goes down. People get drunk. People do oh, yeah. like try and have sex. People, some, some dance, we're not naming names, but some dancers right. like we'll sleep with you for money. Everyone kind of maybe has an only fan. Like, right. so if you could like get, give, give us a story or two of like some wildness that you've seen in the strip club, because <laughs> I'm sure I'll have questions. <laughs> I have so many stories, but I'm going to go with my favorite, most recent story because it's at the new club I'm at in California. So it's a Tuesday. It's like two o'clock, right? I like to work day shift. Because, PM, two o'clock PM? Yeah. Okay. All right, afternoon. All right. <laughs> I am a day shift worker. I, it's sometimes at night. It's what I like to call fake busy because people are already drunk and they're like, you know, it'd be funny. Like, let's go to a strip club. Not yeah. people like if you're in a strip club at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, you know you're why you're serious. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of those like one client will make your day kind of situations, which I prefer. So mm-hmm. a little backstory. It's, it's a Tuesday. It's the afternoon. There's like maybe three or four people in the club doing their thing. They're regulars. I see them every day. They're kind of sad, old white dudes, right? This is the scenery. This girl walks in and she's like, she's pretty cute. You know, she's like a smaller, thicker girl. She's got her lashes done, like full face makeup. Like she's, she's doing her thing. She's here with this guy and I happen to be on stage and they just threw a bunch of money, which is always lovely. Like that's one of those shifts where you go home and you're like, I'm never quitting. I'm going to yeah. do this forever. It's kind of like gambling. It's like addicting, right? Cause there's this element of luck. And so I naturally sit down with them afterwards. Cause I was, you know, thinking to myself, okay, they're going to make my Tuesday. They're fun. Couples are hit or miss. Couples either are amazing or one of them doesn't want to be there and got convinced to go. So at this point, I'm assuming they're dating. They're adorable. They're ordering shots. They're like, having a good time together. It doesn't seem like one of them is disappointed. It seems like maybe it was the girl's idea to go there. I forget sometimes that I have a pretty high tolerance with drinking. I come from an alcoholic father. I just can put it somewhere. I don't know where it goes. It's just, you know, a little special skill. 
So yeah. we're, we have like, I don't know, maybe three shots. Everything seems fine. We're like a little loose. We're throwing money on the other dancers. We're having a good time. We're getting the whole club paid. I bring in another girl because I'm awesome and nice. And I love when everybody makes money. And we decide to do a couple's dance. So couple's dances, like I said, sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're really fucking weird. I've had people try to have sex underneath me. I've had people fight. I've had people love it. It's it's one of those like high risk, high reward situations. Mm. So long story short, we get back in the dances. We're going to do 20 minutes of lap dances. They're so drunk that literally I'm just like standing, you know, like, ooh, you guys are so cute. Like, yeah, like not even touching them. It's great. It's my favorite thing. You know, you pay for lap dances before you get them. So if it's not the experience you want, no refunds. Mm. This is how it goes. But they were like feeling on each other. And I was like, cool, like you guys have fun. It starts to become more apparent, though that this might not be her boyfriend. Mm. This is a stripper who brought a trick into another club to spoil other girls, which go off, girl. I love that. Thank you for bringing it back, you know, sharing the love. And if you don't know what a trick is, it's like a dude you're, you know, taking money from, from the club. And sometimes girls will go on dates outside of the club and kind of give you the boyfriend treatment, if you will. Mm -hmm. Sometimes tricks know that they are tricks and sometimes tricks think they are your boyfriend. Which there's some integrity there. That's not for me to say, you know, to each their own. Sure. Yeah. And so he's starting to get really aggressive with her. And I'm like, okay, like, let's be gentle. Cause she starts going, ow, ow, my hair. And he grabbed her like by the nape of her neck and like very aggressive. And she starts wailing on this dude. And so they like essentially start fighting each other. And so me being who I am, I put my little, 100 pound white girl body in the middle of this fight why i do this i don't know but i do this and so i try to like separate them you know and it just seems like they're gonna argue forever and so i cut the dance short this other dancer that i was working with is very new she's been stripping for like maybe three weeks she's 21 she doesn't know what's going on and i'm trying to protect her i'm like okay this is gonna go south really quickly so i was like we're done um that was your dance thank you like you're dismissed and you know, I don't think anything of it. I take my money, go back in the club. I have to pee. So I'm like, okay, we'll run to the bathroom real quick. I see this trail of vomit towards the bathroom, up the door, up onto the ceiling, as if someone just like, (laughs) we don't know how people puke like this. Like these aren't short ceilings. Okay. (laughs) The dude is throwing up in the bathroom. Apparently he sprayed everything. The girl is like laying in a pile of vomit in the bathroom, just dying. And I'm thinking to myself, like, number one, we got to make sure they don't drive. Number two, if I would have let that dance go on for five more minutes, Mm -hmm. I could have been that puke covered ceiling, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so long story short, none of this is short, but they try to get the dude out. They get the guy out. Nobody wants to touch the girl. She's like literally in a dangerous position throwing up. And I'm like, okay, someone's going to literally die. And so me being me in my seven inch heels, I like get a ponytail. I put her hair up. I like try to situate her, put her phone in her purse, like get her out of the puddle, scrub myself with rubbing alcohol, scrub herself with rubbing alcohol. Mm. And none of the security wanted to help her. And she weighs like twice what I weigh. And so I literally like picked her up in my heels, trying not to slip on all the vomit everywhere. And I carry her outside. And then the boyfriend was like, where's her chain? Where's her chain? Where's her necklace? And I was like, is that really what you're worried about right now? Like nobody robbed you guys. You're fine. And they tried to drive. Like she had her necklace. It was just covered in vomit. Everything was covered in vomit. And so I get her outside. I make sure they don't drive. And then I had to keep working like nothing happened. But uh, I did get a lot of pity money from the regulars because they were like, you're a saint. Like most people would have just left that alone. But I felt personally responsible because it was my client. (laughs) Yeah, and this was a Tuesday in the afternoon. And then I ended up working to like nine. But I made really good money that day. Yeah, and that's the only thing at the end of the day that matters, really. If you're in the if you're in the stripper business, right? But I mean, I I do I do want to say, I mean the vomiting on the ceiling up up to the ceiling that is very impressive it was really impressive impressive. honestly and they were both really short i was like you can't even reach that like the velocity yeah yeah i mean what 
What were you doing shots of, I think, is my next question. Um, we were taking that? shots of tequila, but I kind of think they did drugs in the bathroom after our dance because they were arguing, but they did sure. not seem inebriated. And I know they drank before they got there because they told me that, but some people really go from <laughs> zero to 100 with drunk and do not show any signs. Like, I bartended for a long time, too, and you'll see people literally go from, like, conversing normally to refusing to get up, you know? yeah. It's yeah. it's a very wild experience. But yeah, I think we had three shots of tequila. Fuck. Uh, well, that yeah. means three shots, depending on the time frame. That means it was like for, two hours. Oh, well, then what the hell? Yeah. Like, yeah, there definitely there was some other substance involved. Um, they had to have done some like fentanyl cocaine in the bathroom or something because they did <laughs> yeah. go to the bathroom and then they were still fighting and then the sickness commenced. So were they in the family restroom in the strip club or what? Luckily, we gender? don't have one. Oh, okay. Because yeah. if we had a family restroom, it would be the drug restroom. Um, yeah. yeah. Family restrooms are great for doing drugs. Don't ask me how they I know are. that. I just know that. Just we do our research yeah. for yeah. science. Yeah. So we can benefit everyone else. We exactly. just know there's for more the room in there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. That is a pretty fucking wild story, especially for a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday I was just hoping to make my minimum and get out. And then I was like, that got away from me really fast. Yeah, yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> um, so, do you normally work day side stuff, or or do you like mix it up? Do you like will you go I in like on a Saturday days. night? Okay. Yeah, I normally work days, or like if I start during the day and I have a client like on the line, or you know, I know someone's coming in, I'll stay into the night. Um, at my mm -hmm. old club, I would work night shifts, but it was a bigger club. We had like three stages, a pole on the bar. This club has one main stage, but they don't always have girls on the stage. It's very weird to me because um, it has almost like a burlesque cabaret look of a setup, but yeah. they don't have a rotation. Dancers are not required to dance on stage at this club. They're required to do lap dances. Where at my other club, it was the opposite. We had to dance on stage, but if you wanted to do lap dances, that was up to you. Club didn't take any money. This club, for every $200 you make, they take $75. Wow. Yeah. Fucking That's, robbery. Yeah. I did not know this. Dancing in California is one of those states where they take the most like money. Colorado was amazing. Um, I did not realize how lucky I had it. And I will be returning to <laughs> dance for a few weeks just to be like, oh, the good yeah. old days. <laughs> I mean, for real. I mean, and maybe we can get Gavin Newsom to like pass some sort of strippers ordinance where it's like less, that. less stripper tax. Well, he watches the show. He listens to sex party. So uh, I, I, who knows, but I, I love maybe, it. If, if he is listening, you know, <laughs> let's, let's rally around that idea. Please. Um, yeah, because we, we tackled it last time. I mean, stripping is not easy. No, it is God. a lot of physical things, but also like everything you just talked about, like having to put up with drunk people, people doing drugs, people with no money. And we don't have an hourly wage. Like we're 1099s. Like we don't have workman's comp. Like if you get injured, if I would have slipped in that pile of vomit and broke my ankle, Ugh. I would be out of work, but I wouldn't have any workman's comp. So it's, we aren't really protected which to loop back to our political climate is terrifying. Like, I don't know yeah. if strip clubs and porn will be dealt with the same way if Project 2025 goes through, but it's mm -hmm. scary because we already don't have protections and Trump is fucking pro like porn stars and he's fine, but not everybody has that privilege, <laughs> right? So yeah, yeah. Scary time yeah. to be a sex worker in general. Yeah, I mean, and I host a show called Sex Party, so I'll be on, I'll be on that same bot. Like when they round us all right. up, I'll be on that. I'll probably be one of the later want pickups, but like I'll be. They'll, they'll, <laughs> You'll be, be in the concentration camps with us. Yeah, yeah, so I look forward to that. That should be really great. Um, I always it's joke, scary, joke right? that if somebody arrests me or shoots me, um, it'll be the best thing in the world for this podcast but um you know you'll be famous we'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah um in kind of a uh oh he got killed doing what he loves sort of a way but yeah. you know maybe it'll be just like a flesh wound or something or maybe there you go. We, just we your ear just stay. a little cartilage yeah. oh piercing. my god is it too be soon the, to be in the ear club. yeah 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 no you um, know what i'll do i'll extend my thoughts and prayers because that helps so much when kids get shot up in schools trump got shot so thoughts and prayers to you yeah well, sure yeah and there you go and <laughs> th things are super crazy inflamed and yet yeah you know 
it wouldn't help anybody's stress, right? So, so like ban strip clubs and no. I mean, to ban to ban porn. I mean, come on, we we need our porn. What the fuck? Honestly, and it's the people <laughs> trying to ban it that watch it the most. And the folks yeah. who are like anti strip club are the ones telling me I look like their granddaughter in the club. You know, like I see the other side of it, and all of the mm-hmm. people people are fake. People are so fake. I'm like, why are you embarrassed? Like, there's yeah. nothing wrong with going to a strip club. There is something wrong with, like, assaulting a woman without her sure. consent and touching her, obviously. But strip yeah. clubs, like, sometimes I really do love my job. I'm like a therapist in a bikini. Like, I get men who are really lonely. Like, one of my favorite clients of all time was an autistic man who just wanted to practice conversation. And he paid me to practice conversing with women because he wanted to be respectful and like learn. And it was so endearing and sweet. And he tipped me like hundreds of dollars to be like, was that the normal amount of eye contact? Like, is it okay if I touch your shoulder and was genuinely asking and learning about consent? Like it's not all $5 hand jobs. Like people are so uneducated on what actually goes on in the strip club. Yeah. I mean, well, I think it it is kind of a murky world, which is great. that we have you to illuminate it because yeah, I mean, I, there's, I've had multiple experience and then obviously I've had friends that have had uh, other experiences. I've mm. hooked, I've hooked up with many strippers and in, in throughout my life and, and whatever. Um, and each experience has been uniquely different. Yeah. Um, and I, I always hear from people like, you know, they do uh, some, some dancers, some strippers do offer, uh, optional services uh yeah. where the you know like you said they'll go on dates they'll perform sex acts they'll have sex yeah. with you but that it's like a case by case basis and and it that's is. that's great right but some clubs don't tolerate it some clubs look the other way mm-hmm. so i mean I'm not going to add. Like, so the club you're at, are you, is everybody Tell giving me. hand jobs? But you know, um, I don't think so, but I've worked at clubs that have <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure like, and your attitude towards it's like, oh, cool. Great. But were they doing that in the club or was it so an outside thing? My, my personal opinion about this, which like not to yuck anyone's yum, like we're totally sure. pro ho over here. I don't <laughs> care if you do extras. I personally, as a coworker would prefer if you do your extras outside the club only because it's hard to compete. So if we're offering the same service for the same amount of money and I'm doing a lap dance and you're giving a blow job or doing, <laughs> doing whatever sexual act you're doing and I'm just dancing, if you're a man, which service are you going to pick, right? It's the same amount. So sure. I am, I am pro get your bag. However, I think it's cool when it, when you take them outside the club, but then there's the safety issue, right? Cause you don't have mm-hmm. security. So it's, it is like a wishy washy thing and it is state by state, club by club. Um, I don't give extras. I know people who do. I know people who do sometimes. I know girls that won't even give you their phone number. I give my phone number to clients because I text them when I'm going into work. Mm -hmm. Um, We all have different boundaries. And I think if I could give any like advice to customers, it's that we all have different boundaries. Respect them. Just ask. We're not going to be offended if if they're like, so what are the rules and what are your boundaries? I would be like, damn, thank you. That's sexy. I am a person. I'm not this sex robot that like beep, boop, 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 powers down in the locker, powers back up. You know, <laughs> it's cool to be treated like a person every now and again. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's crazy that you said that because back in the day, right. I mm-hmm. haven't been to a strip club in a long time. Um, but I, I would never have, I would never think to walk in and immediately say, okay, what are, well, I mean, what are your boundaries? What a great question. Yeah. But also like, Hey, do you offer extras? Like I would, I would imagine at least the way I came up and, you know, was going to strip clubs for everybody's, you know, last stop on Saturday night right. and everybody's fucking um, you know, bachelor party and all this <laughs> yeah. shit, right? Like, I never once was like, hey, do you offer extra? I, I just wasn't – I no. you, it was, it was a, uh, an occasion if I actually spent the money to go get a lap dance, right? Which I usually yep. would do with, with another girl just because – whatever, mm-hmm. right? And, um, and so – I would imagine with that mindset that if I approached a stripper and, you know, we're in the back room about to do a dance and I'm like, hey, so do you offer extras like blowjob, handjob, like sex, like that I would just get like punched in the mouth and like tased might, and thrown, out, thrown outside. Now that you know I, I mean? like hear that flip back <laughs> at me, I'm like, maybe don't ask so boldly, but like. I don't know, just communication, I guess, is what I sure. should have said. Yeah, but I have had people ask and I'm like, no. 
And they're like, okay, thanks for telling me. That's always better than them just like trying to rip your G-string off because that will happen too. People are very, very handsy. Like I make good money, but like I said previously, like high risk, high reward. Like people get assaulted on the regular. Well, that's the other thing too is part of what I just said was Mm -hmm. like it was very known – um, and I always try to be like as respectful as possible, obviously. Yeah. Like, I, I, like I was still like sitting on my hands, like, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. it used to be like that, like sit on totally. your hands, don't touch anyone. We'll fuck you up. Like whatever. I like clubs like that. So the club I'm <laughs> yeah. at right now, I'm going to tell you something crazy. Security is not even inside. They're outside Why? of the front door. Why? Oh it's not safe. It's not safe. This, if I would have started dancing at this club as my first club, I probably would have quit. It's terrifying. You have to be a seasoned stripper to work at the club I work at now and be bold about your boundaries and be willing to punch someone in the face because security does not have your back. Even when that girl was dying in her own vomit, security was outside. Right? Wow. And that's, so, I probably shouldn't be disclosing these things, but I didn't say the club. So we're just going to go yeah, off. No, no, no. Yeah, My yeah, first sure. club, they had no touch lap dances and then VIP was an upsell. If a man touched your kneecap, there right. was security right there. Like, yo, bro, yeah. do it again and you're fucking out. I saw people get tased, thrown to the ground. Like, they had the girls' backs. My second club, kind of in the middle. Security was inside. They watched. But they kind of, like, would let you set your boundaries. But if it escalated, they would come get you. This sure. club, I have been assaulted at this club. And nobody even bat an eye. I don't even know if they watch the cameras, to be honest with you. I don't know what girls do back there. I don't pay attention. I'm like, that's your business. That's none of my <laughs> business. But it's not safe. Yeah. No, 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 not at all. I mean, and, and, and saying all that at the same time, I wasn't, uh, I don't know if it was Vegas. I don't know where I was. I can't. Vegas clubs are wild. Yeah. Well, I have a story about that too, but, um, I can't remember fucking anything, uh, like where I was, but there were, there was a couple occasions where a girl would, or dancer would take my hands and put them on her. And I'm like, Oh, this feels like I shouldn't be doing this. She's like, no, 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 it's cool, cool, like whatever. So that being said, it's like it is. You're right. It is like a case by case basis. It is. You have to. Um, you have to kind of figure out it, it, communication, right? Don't I mean mm-hmm. subtly talk about? Hey, do you don't have? Do you have an OnlyFans? Da, 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 right. Whatever, and then maybe it'll whatever. Um, I'm glad that we're like telling them. Well, I guess we're like helping sex workers like hook up to make more money or whatever if, if that's what they're doing anyway. You know. It's case by case with customers yeah. and sex workers. Like that's the thing. Like it's kind of hard to regulate because it is so different in different yeah. states, different clubs, different girls, different customers. Mm-hmm. Every girl has their own hustle and I respect them all. Like some yeah. girls will just sit on your dick and be like, we're doing a dance right now and drag you and just like take control. And I'm yeah. more like, hi, this is my name. What's yours? What's your favorite color? Like I'm so awkward and neurodivergent that I'm like, do the, the talking part. Um, could I have some money, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I'm going to try to condense this story because it's a bit like the hangover, but I feel the need. I've never told the story on the oh, podcast. Tell me. Now. Oh, my gosh. I'm all ears. Um, yes. And while I'm doing this, if you could think of another crazy strip club story to tell. Uh, so okay. this is – essentially, this is me telling the story. I'm going to omit the names, but I'm buying you time. I'm going to omit the names. <laughs> so, so we went – a friend of mine got – married long time ago not going to say the year because it will identify the culprit here but (laughs) there was some there was 10 guys we went to vegas for the bachelor party as you do and you know it's going to be a whole weekend of strip clubs and casinos and all the fucking things and oh no there's sex work that they'll come to your room and like all these things Mm -hmm. so there was one gentleman who had never been to Las Vegas and he was, you know, he was really giddy on the plane. Um, we get there. He, you, you know, when you get off uh, the plane, at the airport in Las Vegas, um, if you haven't never been, there's slot machines everywhere. So he runs up, you know, first thing he does, right. Drops his bag on the ground, runs up, puts some money or whatever into a, or gets change or whatever you do. And, you know, activates the slot machine. First fucking button push, guy wins 500 bucks. No way. Yeah, well, this gets so much worse. And so, (laughs) this gets so much worse. And so, and so everyone's like, oh my God, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
this I, I'm like in the back of my head that like this is the worst thing that could ever happen because now he's he's buying into the dream that mm. I'm just lucky. I'm just lucky. Right. So me and a couple of guys peel off. It's Sunday in Vegas. We go to the big pool thing. We're drinking Bloody Marys, doing shots in the pool, meeting people, hanging out, right? Chilling. The other the other half or whatever, they go to like Golden Nugget or something downtown because his dad told him like there's good, there's good, you know, slots and whatever. They go, uh, we're, <laughs> we're in the pool for like maybe 45 minutes and I get this call. It's them screaming. Same guy who got the 500 bucks on the slot machine just won 15000 on roulette, okay? So – yeah. So now, so now people are starting to actually believe that he is lucky. And I'm like, we're right. so fucked. This is going to end up so bad. Like, I'm so fucked. Yeah. 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 We're, <laughs> this is going to end up so bad because I had been to Vegas, like, I don't know, seven or eight times. You get and it. I, I, yeah. 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 And so <laughs> we're at this club. He pays for a VIP. I'll skip over it, whatever. But basically, like, we got the bottles, did all the things. We're yep. in the fucking, and here comes this German guy. Okay. And he, and he, and he, and I'm like, He's like, you know, hello, like, how's it going? You know, him and his three goons, like, worm their way into our area. And I was like, you know, you got to watch out for this dude. This is going to be a scam. Just just wait, just wait, just wait. This guy sounds like Hans Gruber, the bad guy from Die Hard, right? Oh I'm God. like, this is not going to end well, but I'll go with it if you guys want to have an adventure. Like, but I'm going to so, watch. <laughs> yeah, so here comes fucking Mr. Lucky, right? And he's like fucking loaded. His eyes are getting ready to cross over. And like, he's just been spending all night long. Right. Mr. Vegas, we'll call him. Yeah. And, and so Mr. Vegas is like, Hey, this guy wants to take us to a strip club. He'll take us in a limo. It's free. I'm like, first of all, it's not free. Second of all, you don't want to do that. Okay. And so like, you know, flash forward 20 minutes. It's 10 guys in a limo with Hans Gruber from Die oh Hard headed, whatever. We we get to the strip club and all the dancers are outside. I don't know. He must have ordered some special pack, whatever the guy's in his ear the whole time. Special packages, yep. So we go in and he's like, oh, hey, you have to pay cover for everyone now. And you have to buy all – we got you a free limo, so you have to buy everyone. So they start right. bleeding him. Uh, everybody disappears except for me and one other guy. And and we're and like strippers are coming and grabbing everyone and taking them. Yep. And I'm like, no, 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 they're not going to get me. I'm like kind of like <laughs> George Clooney and Dust Till Dawn, right? Okay. It's me and another guy back to back. Like we're not, we're not going, I'm not falling for it. I know how this ends up. So um, basically like 30 minutes, I don't see any or hear from anybody, including the groom. And oh then he, here comes the groom. He's like, you got to help me. He's like, you're the only one that can help us out. I'm like, what's up? He's like, you got to come with me right now. So I go with him. There is like a seven foot tall, 380 pound bouncer. And he's like, your friend, Mr. Vegas with the cash took three girls into a private room and has a fucking uh, chair wedged up underneath the door. And he's throwing money everywhere. And it's causing absolute pandemonium. We're going to break the door down. We're going to break both of his legs. It'd probably be, you know, smart if you had an ambulance here for him to, because we're, we're, we're going to fuck him up. I said, listen, if I can get him out, he's like, if you, he's like, I'll give you three minutes. And they're you not get bluffing. Him out. They will. No, they, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to go get my twin brother. I'm like, fuck, he's got a twin brother. Right. You know, so <laughs> another, like, there's two of them. Yeah. So they're going to break his leg. So I get him out. Right. And, and, you know, I pull him out. There's no problem. We fucking shove his ass in a cab, whatever. We get into a cab behind get them. Get out of there. Going back to the, we lose the cab, whatever. And, and I'm like, okay, well, they'll be back at the hotel. We show up at the hotel. There's a, <laughs> There's a bus with the fucking logo of the strip club that we just came from at yeah. And and so the groom comes wandering out with his head down. I'm like, what happened? He's like, apparently he ordered like room service, quote unquote. Oh and, he, my and God. there's ten strippers from the club have already been here waiting. They're arguing. So he's up in the room with like ten or fifteen strippers. There's money everywhere. There's prostitutes. The the, the cab drivers, like, you know how they do in Vegas, they sell you what he called yeah. like four or five of those. At the end of the day, this guy, he wound up blowing not only through the 15K, right. but he put another 15K on, on credit cards trying to win back the 15K. And he, he wound up paying $2,500 
for a hand job that he got uh, while she was wearing a latex glove. So that's that's the stripper Vegas story I had to get. I know it's very long. Everyone's like, no, shut the fuck amazing. up. that's amazing. Don't ever shut the, the fuck story. up. The world needs that story. I looked like a trout the whole time you were telling that story. My jaw was on the floor. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. strippers I, will take advantage. That's the thing. Like, if you're drunk, some girls will help you and some girls will rob your ass. Like, it is so much easier to take advantage of someone you don't respect. And like, not to say there's anything wrong with your friend, but if you're a Vegas dancer and you see someone like it's hitting all the major points, right? Bachelor party, already drunk, won money in the slots, has the attitude of Mr. Lucky. That is the perfect setup yeah. to make so much money. And I bet if you had the strippers tell their version of that story, it would be fucking hilarious. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Like being yeah. the friend and then being the dancer, like... Oh, yeah. your poor friend. I feel bad for him, man. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes I'm a bad stripper because I feel bad for people. <laughs> like, that's why I like, this is going to sound weird. I like dancing for ignorant ass Trumpies because I feel no remorse taking their money. When there are people who are nice to me, sometimes I'm like, oh, I could ask you yeah. for more dances, but I feel bad. Like, you have a wife and kids at home. Like, you already spent way too much money, bro. Like, this is going to show up on your statement. <laughs> like, Yeah. Well, I mean... Number one rule of stripping, I would imagine, is just get the bag under any yeah. circumstances, right? Yeah, and that whole thing with 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 the bachelor party, I just told you, like that whole saga of him winning the fifteen k, you and knew thirty k in debt because he doubled down. You know that was all took place within nine hours. So that was just wow. day one. We had two more days to go. He was flat broke. I think he even lost his shoes. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean it's pretty close to the hangover. It's just like a little more graphic stripper edition. Um, yeah, it's like the yeah. NC yeah. seventeen version. Yeah. So with oh that, God. with my story being out there, like I hope I bought enough time for you to recall. Uh, maybe you got too enthralled in my saga, oh but my you God. have to, you have to have another wild one from. I have so club. many, and I have a Vegas one too, but it happens to be including my in laws. So I wish I could tell it, but my <laughs> partner would fucking murder me if I talked about our family stripper experience. <laughs> I mean, a family extra. How could you not talk about a family? Oh, experience? my God. I know. No, but you reminded me. I can't remember if I already told this story. Did I tell you the Jimmy John's story? The business. I think so. Story? Yeah. I yeah. Did. Yeah. The yeah, business yeah, yeah. write off stories happen all the time. We get people sure. who are like, oh, well, it's a write off because I'm in here with my coworker or I'm here with my boss. And then the boss it's will a buy a bunch meeting. of lap dances. And I'm like, dude, this is who taught you about write offs. Like, that's not how that goes. But I, I have, I had one crazy week when I first started where I had one client who had a dick enlargement surgery. And mm. then I had a client the same week who had a dick and a chastity belt. And so it was just like all this stuff. These I'm sound learning. familiar too. Actually. I you told you those too. Oh, yeah. those are my favorites. They're so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> what about like they're... old men? Should I tell you about that? Like why I choose old men as my clients? Well, because they're more peaceful and they don't require a lot of their dicks um... don't work, so they don't poke oh. you ever. So you don't have to feel a fucking schlong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's oh, interesting man. because if you if you're you know if you're queer, right? Yeah. If you're you know, and and you're like really into women. I mean, do you just buy like how do you then hop on someone's lap? I mean, you just like okay, this is work. I'm 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 just gonna get this fucking bag. I don't give a fuck, right? So I'll be whatever I, you need me to be for the yeah. moment for your five minute song, right? It's funny because you pay for lap dances ahead of time. Um, so there's like a little bit of robbery there. Like you don't know what experience you're going to get. And I have learned through trial and error that the faster you move, the harder it is for them to grab you. Oh so every God. now and again, I'll just like, <laughs> you know, you work at the dance moves where you pivot around and like, yes, twirl. I spin a lot. I shake my ass in their face for sure. But I try to avoid like touching them at all costs. So, and I took a Brazilian dance class in college. So I'm actually really good at shaking my ass for a white girl. It's like my little, my, my trick, if you will. And so yeah, I just secret like, weapon. yeah, you wear out the clock, not the cock. You move quickly. Nice. <laughs> you have to be in control. Like I'll grab their hands and hold them and then stand far away because they can't reach me. <laughs> right. So I kind of take like a dominatrix uh, mindset towards it and I'll be like, touch me again. And you owe me a hundred dollars and I'm hitting you. 
And yeah. I will do that. Like I've, oh, did I tell you the, oh, I just triggered a story in my brain. Did I tell you about the guy who paid me to step on his dick and kick him in the face? You know, I don't care if you told us or not. <laughs> tell us again. That's, that's, okay. that's worth, that's worth a repeat. Let me set the scene. He's like a bar regular. I've seen him for like six months. Had no idea that he loved to be like a little bitch, little baby sub and like completely taken advantage of. And one day he was like, do you know, like my kinks? And I was like, no, dude, like I've never danced with you. Like I just assumed I wasn't your type. And so he was like, I want you to hurt me. And I was like, okay. But he really wanted me to hurt me. Like he wanted me to like step on his balls and his dick with my heels. And I have boundaries myself. I have boundaries with my partner. So the first day he asked me, I was like, let me get back to you. I go home and I'm like, yo, Colby, um, how do you feel about me stepping on dicks? Cause I'm not touching them. And like, I don't want to touch a dick. Like I'm too queer for that. Like, that's just not my thing. And so I asked, I'm like, is that within our boundaries? And they were like, that's hilarious. You should do it. And so I go back to work. He's there the next day. And I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to take out some pent up aggression on this guy. Oh gosh. I'm wearing seven inch heels that are like thigh high boots. I step on his dick. I step on his balls. I'm like genuinely terrified. I'm going to cause like permanent medical damage. I'm like, this is like, who hurt you? Somebody he's got issues. Right. But get the bag, right. Get the bag, get the bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I'm like stepping on his dick and he was like, can you spit in my drink? And I don't know who I was that day. I was like hundred dollars. And he was like, what? And I was like hundred dollars. And so I spit in his shot and he drank it. And I was like, Whoa. so gross. Wow. I don't <laughs> get it. I've like given people my gum. But he was like, I have one more request. And I was like, oh, God, like, this is where it's going to get really weird. Mm -hmm. And he was like, kick me in the face. And I was like, you want me to take my shoes off? Like, are you sure? And he was like, you have long legs. Like, you seem pretty strong. And I was like, I mean, I did take stunt training for acting at one point. I've got a pretty good, like, round <laughs> kick in me. And so I round kick him in the face with my platform and my shoe across his jaw. And his head just whips to the oh side and he's like oh yeah that's the stuff and i'm like okay can i have my money now like thank you but i made a lot of money just like beating the shit out of this dude wow i mean that yeah. okay uh yeah it was I a mean, first that's... <laughs> did he come back for more or no he did he did and apparently he's okay. been doing this with other girls for a long time like so much so that management at that club like knew this guy and were like knew not to go back there because it wasn't a fight. It was like a paid right. consensual agreement. Um, sure. The club just wanted you to do that in the back so that other people didn't <laughs> see it and like think <laughs> something was going wrong. Yeah. Because um, yeah. it's perfectly legal, but like as far as triggering other people who don't want to mm -hmm. watch people get beat up. Yeah. I mean, and to each their own where, yeah. I mean, you have your own things that, that get you, get you going and that's fucking awesome. No one's shaming that. I think yeah. it's pretty wild and, and, and good that on you fun. for fucking, yeah, yeah. For asking, you know, if, if you're listening, good on you for asking her to do that. Right. And good on you yeah. for fucking doing it. Right. You know, and, and I haven't been to a strip club in a long time, but I will, there are some things that go right along with this. I mean, I follow all of them on social, yeah. you know, here in Chicago, uh, everywhere, really, whatever. Um, my, my Instagram is loaded with strip clubs, but, um, the, the, the thing that goes with that, there is this trend where, you uh, and, and and I'm I'm not sure if you guys do this like in in Colorado or in California where you're at now, but you go up to the bar and you pay for a drink. Mm -hmm. She throws it in your face and then she slaps you. It's like this new trend that, that I I've seen that. in strip clubs. Hey, did we know you guys doing that or no? No, but I want to. That sounds amazing. I yeah. like a switch in real life, but in the club, it feels safe to be in control. And like, it's kind of fun to slap a dude. Let's be honest. It's, it's good time. Yeah. I would love to be like, will you buy me a drink and then just throw it in their face and smack them. I don't yeah. know if I'd get fired or um, if I get applauded. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's like Probably a... applauded. And then you have like a line of people, but like, if you go to like <laughs> any big strip club, um, to their Instagram, you'll see. Yeah. And I think you have to, the, the person has to sign a consent form first. Okay. So you sign up for this. This isn't like you, a, you've no, done it. No, gotcha it's not like a random. Situation. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's like a thing where they, they want you to do it and they want you to do as hard, as hard as you day. can. All day. I don't know where it came from. Backhand. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Um, and it's it. been like the last two years that I've seen it. And now it's really taking off in strip clubs. So we're um, going to start doing theme nights at my club. And it's going to be mm -hmm. really cool. We're going to all like dress up and like probably do some drag and stuff. 
I'm going to talk to my manager when I go in the club later today and be like, mm-hmm. can we do slap shots? Because I will get on the bar and like pour it in your mouth, shake your head, smack you around. Like I've seen that at Ren Fairs where they'll yeah. like put your hands in little cuffs and some lady with like huge tits in a corset will be like, oh, you're a bad boy. Do you want it? And just like completely <laughs> emasculate you and people pay yeah. for it and love it. Yeah. I'm going to find out. We might have to do this, episode four and then I'm going to tell yeah, you all no, about it. No, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, it seems a bit rougher than that. I'm going to like, they're actually yeah? like hit you hard, like open handed. Damn. But, like, yeah. I mean, Hence if you the go, consent form. Yeah, I'll try to find. I'll send you some shit on Instagram. Please. I'll, I'll forward you some shit. You'll be like, educate oh my God. me. Oh my God. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, the other trend that I've seen, and and maybe this is just something that's popping up in my, uh, you know, in my feed and not in anyone else's, because you know, the fucking sex party deviant guy. But um, yeah, I bet I your noticed, for you page is crazy. <laughs> it's insane, to be honest. <laughs> And it's insane. I show my girlfriend all the time. She's like, oh my God. You know, like Instagram's showing me this right now. She's like, Jesus. Yeah. And then they fucking penalize me for talking about it, you fucking dicks. That part. Yeah, they're bad. Um, the other trend is that, and and again, we're going to the expert you here on this, but I've noticed in strip clubs uh this trend with dancers who will wear like a light up butt plug in their ass and then with like a, with like a G string. Is this a thing now? Is this I've a heard thing about where... this. Okay. I've heard okay. about this. Um, so I work in only topless clubs, but from some of my friends who do full nude, I've heard that they'll dance in butt plugs all night. And my brain immediately went to ouch. Like, yow, I don't want to be upside down on a pole with something up my butt. More power to you. I sure, have heard about yeah. the light up butt plugs being a hit. Like it, I suppose it's for the kink community, you know, like I get a lot of feet people personally, cause I wear open toed boots. Um, but I, Hey, I'm all for it. If you can handle a butt plug in your ass for eight hours, why not make it light up? Yeah. <laughs> it's very like raver dance. Like it seems kind of fun. Yeah. It's not really yeah. my bag. And I think that's also club by club. I don't think that would be allowed at my club because we're only topless. But full nude, I would maybe, this is a completely uneducated guess here. Maybe some clubs even recommend you wear a butt plug to like yeah, cover your asshole. <laughs> well, I mean, and the the ones I've seen, obviously, again, on Instagram, yeah. right? It's like they're wearing a butt plug. It, it's it's light up. They can make it change colors. But there's Whoa. just like their you see underwear. It under the G-string. It's like you know, a b- butt plug's like big, right? So it's like Freaky. popping out of the of the sides of like the thong or like yeah. the g string or whatever it is. Wow. And I, then then there was one in one they were doing like a a quick interview and I forget which club it was and they were like, "Is it in your ass or your pussy?" She's like, "Oh, like I I move it around, but today it's in my pussy." So like I was like, "Wait a minute, how is that legal to wear?" <laughs> a, I move uh, it around. I hope a she butt plug it. in your pussy. At the strip club, but I would imagine. I mean, I was fascinated when I saw this. It's trend. fascinating. And then I, I saw a ton of people doing it from different clubs all over the place. So you've never yeah. seen that in person. I have not seen it in person. I have heard about the trend. Um, yeah. I also I feel like in Canada they uh, prostitution is legal, and so those clubs they'll like straight up fuck themselves with dildos and stuff on stage. Like yeah. I've worked yeah, yeah. at clubs where they have porn star nights where they do like crazy shows. But that's also a different legality. So again, state by state, club by club, which is why I'm so worried about Project 2025, because it's going to like become Christian nationalism. So like these things, it might become a federal law and not state by state. So you won't be able to go to certain clubs with light up butt plugs. And if that's your thing, you should be able to see it. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. I mean, again, Canada, you know, Canada has one up on us there. They got health care and legalized prostitution what the fuck is going on and that's better for dancers too like i know that sounds scary to people who aren't like educated in this kind of stuff but like regulating isn't necessarily bad like it does provide protections for the dancers in certain circumstances um and because it's legalized doesn't mean that strippers who don't want to have sex are required to have sex it just means that you're not going to go to prison for being a sex worker you know so um canada is just 
I'm going to renew my yeah. passport soon. Let's put it that way. <laughs> She's not up till October, but I'm like, I better get that in before this election because mama's scared. <laughs> yeah, I lived close. I grew up close to Detroit. So we would go over the border at 19 all the Hell time because yeah. you, could, you could drink at 19. So we'd just yeah. be up there fucking losing our minds. And, oh, what a fun and, time. And- yeah, the American dollar would go further in Canada. Yep. They have Tylenol with codeine in it. That's a fun one, right? So you get some beers, you Dude. get some what I Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the strip clubs are wild. <laughs> Canada, and that was just in Windsor right there. Right. Toronto is a whole other beast. I've heard Toronto's insane and they even have clubs with like yeah. showers on the stage. Like I've never gone to strip clubs outside of the United States. I've been to clubs that I didn't dance at, obviously, but Yeah. It's such a like unique experience everywhere you go. And I don't want to see those unique experiences leave. Like, I just want my girls to be paid and safe. And that's it. I mean, if I had a stack of cash here right now, and and this isn't going where where you think it's going, but I would bet it on, (laughs) I I would bet it on the fact that, you know, the average Trump voter doesn't want to do away with going to a strip club with their buddies like that's gonna upset a lot of Uh, people i would argue majority of my clients are republicans and i would also argue that majority of trump supporters are uneducated in the fact that project 2025 is a real thing it's not this like myth like look it up it's going to affect immigrants sex workers women literally anybody who wants to have fun like it's a very, very scary time to be a lot of different people. And the folks that go to the strip club six days a week that I see are voting against what they want out of life. It's like, I obviously have very strong political opinions, but sure, sure. to the dudes who want to just get a beer at two o'clock at a strip club and watch football and have boobies in the background, that's on the line too. Like, mm-hmm. It's fucking crazy. And then how are you going to get abortions for the girls you're knocking up? You know what I mean? Like truly yeah. people are uneducated and it's sad and scary. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Well, that's the other thing too is like <clears throat> we were talking a bit before we started recording and it's like to me the thing um, that kind of makes me like wait a minute uh, is that you'll have women who are pro-abortion or pro-women's right to choose, right? Yeah. They're pro-birth control, pro-IVF. But, you know, they'll say on their Instagram, like, don't, you know, keep your hands off my abortion rights. Right. But then they'll have like a Trump flag or something. And it, and to me, it's weird because I don't listen. If you're if you're a MAGA dude and you're listening to this, like it, we get it. You make sense. Yeah. I'll, 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 like, like, listen, everybody is welcome here. I get yeah. it. We, we want to. Uh, but like this stuff. Come to my know, strip club. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff bothers me in the sense that I don't understand why someone would vote. I, I get why people Against are like, I'm their sick. own best interest. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, I understand why people are like sick of like the, the fucking everyday politician. Like it's just not working yeah. and whatever. And everybody gets it. Right. But then it's like someone from like Trump comes along and okay. So, so he has a pull on, on all these people, but then somehow he's convinced People around Women. him have con- convinced all these people to vote against the, their self interest, and that yep. and that sucks. And it's like I don't want anybody to be like, "Hey, I used to listen to your show and 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 like it, uh, but now you're in prison for doing a sex podcast." Exactly. Uh, you know what I mean, or whatever. So right. yeah, I mean, I think that's important too. And the other thing too is like you know, a lot of these women who are pro Trump, like they all have only not all, but a lot of them have only fans where they're yeah. doing sex work on online or whatever. And that's crazy. Like to vote against your own, to vote against your own, you know, what's good for you is one thing to vote against your own money. Right. Your rights and your money. Good luck. That's no, cray, it makes cray. no sense. Like <laughs> I, and a lot of the louder Trumpies that I have come in contact with recently are mm-hmm. people of color they're immigrants, they're women. I just don't understand how someone who's not a white sure. dude with the mo- the utmost privilege or someone who's in the 1% would want to vote for that. Like I remember a time when being Republican or Democrat was just a difference in opinion and not yeah. like, I don't think people deserve human rights. Like homelessness is become like made illegal. Like you can't sleep outside now and all these, like there's so many, I could go on the deepest political tangent and you wouldn't think that a stripper would encounter political opinions so frequently from people who benefit from the the opposite. Yeah. Like daddy Biden isn't trying to fuck with your daily, like favorite thing to do. 
And, yeah. and I get that Biden and Trump, neither one of them is perfect. Hello, no person is a perfect political candidate. We need to zoom out because there are seats that are available, like lifelong seats available during this next term that could affect our country forever. Like, say bye-bye to fun. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? No, it's, no. <laughs> we could yeah. get really deep about it, which we can, but we can also be lighthearted and be like, do you want to watch porn and whack it every now and again? Because that's on the ballot. Why? Yeah. That's the government's any business. We don't know. Like, as no, long as it's, it's consensual, yeah. who cares what you do behind closed right. doors? Apparently, Trump does. Yeah. The irony. Well, I, yeah, it's, it's pretty ironic. What and, does he do and, behind closed doors? Who knows? Some stuff with McDonald's, probably, you know, <laughs> whatever. But everyone's got their fetish, and that's fine. He's he's going through a stressful time. You know, he's got shot in the ear. But, he's um, kink-shaming the entire country. I don't <laughs> like that. No, it's terrible. And terrible. I think a lot of people that have, like, gone in around him are – are making it a lot, a lot worse. And with Biden, it's yeah. like, yo, he is just to up. It's just his sleep game could probably in his Prevagen game. Maybe we take get some it. He's memory he's old, vitamins. He's old yeah. and he has a stutter, but at least he has political experience. And honestly, sure. the people who argue he hasn't done enough in his term, he did take over right after Trump and during yeah. a pandemic. Like I know he's not perfect. I really, I get it, but sure. I'm kind of sick of pe- seeing people that are arguing against Biden not being perfect. It's like, yeah, nobody's arguing with you. We know, we know, like he needs to come out as like bisexual or something to like get the votes back on his side. Right. (laughs) I saw that in a meme the other day and I was like, we got to use that, but we need to start realizing the (laughs) long-term effects of Trump. Like we got to zoom out here on what we want as a country. Like it's only for four years, dude. Like, but with Trump, it's long-term ramifications and the fact that i'm a stripper and i have to speak out about politics should show you how dire the situation is like i would so much rather be talking about light up butt plugs with you but here we are talking about project 2025 (laughs) because it's fucking scary yeah maybe we could do like um just to raise awareness maybe we could do like light up like biden harris uh butt plugs that is the campaign advertisement that they need like why am i not selling those like Honestly, i need to fucking that might be I need, the funniest thing i've heard all day yeah no 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 we uh, need we need the merch um we need to get what, the what, freaks what? and the kinky guys to vote for yeah, Biden. yeah totally oh my god um yeah biden he's not a perfect plugs. candidate but he's there biden biden plugs um biden plugs. Okay, so- <laughs> So, okay. So to pivot, watch this pivot because it's fucking podcast at its finest, right? We did bring up your only, or we did bring up OnlyFans and you do have an OnlyFans. And I do want to check in because we talked about it last time, but I want people to be uh, aware of what's available over there, like what you're doing over there, like, you know, custom things. Because a lot of people who watch the show, listen to the show, they they want to spend money with women. They're women that want to spend money. They're men that want to spend money. They're mm-hmm. couples that want to spend money. And so I want to make sure that we're talking about and like plugging. Get it? You get it? We're plugging. Oh, my um, God. That's the pl- best segue pl- I've ever heard in my life. But plug <laughs> to plugging your- and OnlyFans. <laughs> Yeah, we're plugging your OnlyFans. So You're what brilliant. is going on on your OnlyFans? <laughs> um, that's far too much credit, <clears throat> but I'll take it. Um, and it. what's uh, – like how active are you? What's going on over there? Yeah, so there aren't Biden butt plugs on my OnlyFans yet. Yet. Uh, <laughs> the plugs, right? No, so my OnlyFans is OnlyFans.com slash Madison card. It's Madison with a T, not a D. Mm. And I am trying to be more active on there now that I've moved back to California. Things are settling down. I kind of took a little bit of a break. Um, I do a lot of pole dance videos. We've got the lingerie, the boudoir photos. I do do custom sets through the messages. So Mm -hmm. if that's something you're looking for, you can just shoot me a, they call it, what, a DM? little message on there. Whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, (laughs) It's... It's fun. I'm still thinking about Biden butt plugs. That's going to live in my brain all day. Uh, I mean, I could just see how well it would work, too. Right? You know? Yeah, so I'm more in the art of, like, striptease. I've always been really inspired by burlesque dance. I'm I'm obviously a pole dancer and a stripper. So I will take, like, behind-the-scenes videos and photos at the strip club, which is really cool. Um, You get to see me in my little outfits and what I do from the comfort of your home. 
So I'm kind of like the stripper that if you're a little too shy to go to the strip club, you can go on my page, you can see videos, (laughs) right? I I like the at home nerds. It makes me happy. Yeah, no, 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 Um, it's great. Yeah, so lots of cheeky photos, some videos here and there. No Biden butt plugs, man. I just, I feel like I'm missing a whole audience yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so, okay, <clears throat> if you're doing uh, burlesque, stripper-esque stuff, yeah. is it then, since, since you're not in a club um, for on the OnlyFans, are you going full nude? Are, are, do you talk to the people? Like, do you ta- like, if someone's like, hey, I have some money I'd like to spend, like, yeah. this is... Like like those kind of customs, like or is it all like pretty much like dancing and stuff focused? So I do I do go full nude. It's I'm not getting like rammed from behind by a dick. Like <laughs> it's uh, some people would view it as pornographic. I don't. Um, yeah. only because when I watch porn, it's like crazy. You know, like there's no like face cum shots or whatever. It's all me. I'm not having sex with other people. I love that you do full transparency because I'm not trying to get people in my DMs that are like disappointed with my content yeah, right so sure. it i do do full nude it's a little more on the artsy like tasteful side and i don't mean that in a judgmental way to sex workers it's just more um creative i suppose i do a lot yeah. of nude modeling for my career that i can't post on instagram or on the internet because of you know all of this censoring of women's bodies and so there sure. are full nude shots they're like professional photographs though um i'll do the cheeky selfie every now and again like You'll you'll see all of me. You just won't see like a double ended dildo in my ass. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think people, you know, they want to come over. Like, well, I want to chat, and I want to pay you money right. to chat with you, or like be sexy, or like sexed and shit like that. And yeah. I think a lot of times on on OnlyFans, you'll get someone who's like, oh yeah, baby, blah blah blah, and they'll spend the money, and yeah. then it'll be like, a, oh, I didn't mean like that. Here you go. I mean, a lot yeah. of uh, and and. If that's sort of a double edged sword too, because if you're, be. you need to be asking straight up for like, hey, does this bundle include like asshole shots or right. like come like you said like facials or like whatever you're into? Yeah. Can I talk to you? Like I need to know exactly what's in here because I think the game on all, yeah. yeah, it's it's the same. It's the same get the bag game on OnlyFans, except for on OnlyFans, it can be a little more misleading. So I think yeah. people. The consumer needs to ask more because, you know, no one wants to get kicked off OnlyFans. No, and some people yeah. some people are scamming you. Some people will be like, ooh, a pussy shot, and then it's a picture of a literal cat. You know, like, I'm <laughs> yeah. not doing that. Yeah. Like, mad respect if you're just, like, out here hustling men. Um, oh but like gosh. you said, OnlyFans is a hustle. I try to be very transparent. Like, I don't do porn. There aren't masturbating videos. You can see me fully naked. That's totally dope. That's sure. not my bag, and I'm never yep. going to tell you it is. I'm never going to be like, here's a video of my spouse and I having sex, and then just send you a random picture of a plant. Like, that's not <laughs> oh me. God. I do. Know, I mean, I've heard people doing that, and part of me is like, damn, that's fucked up. And the other part of me is like, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bella Thorne was famously doing that. I She'd heard like, about that, and that's fucked titties. up. Because yeah. that was on a massive scale. It. Mm-hmm. Isn't yeah. she the reason yeah. that now on OnlyFans you can only do a maximum of two hundred dollars per message? Because back then you could charge way more per message, which was so cool. Uh, there were some ramifications that happened. Yeah, it was around that Bella. time. Maybe it wasn't yeah, personally I think they went her back fault. To, but... Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe I mean, you know, a couple thousand people, you Sorry, know, spending Bella money Thorne. for you're really cute. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see your boobs. I mean, we love Bella Thorne, right? But, like, I feel like she, from what I read and saw, she definitely misled a lot of people. So you know. I wonder how much money she made from that. Oh, millions. Oh, see, if M- I, like, mil- I'm not above millions. that. I just don't have that many <laughs> subscribers. Damn. <laughs> I love that you're like, okay, I'm not doing these things. And then you're like, wait a minute. I'm like, I'm 30 now. <laughs> I still have my integrity. How long are we going to keep it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. kidding. Yeah, I mean, millions of dollars. I mean, you know, everybody can kind of be like, well, I'm still comfortable with this, but like, everybody yeah, I has think a that price. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody has, a, has price. a price. And if you say you don't, you're lying, or mom and dad have totally. so much money. Like, everybody has a yeah. price. I just haven't met someone who's paid that price yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and what a, what, what a fucking. I mean, there's no better place to leave it than that. Madison Card, your third appearance on Sex Party. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. This was. 
this was a fun one. This I want to remind them where they can find you on socials, where they can find you on OnlyFans, where yeah. they can find you dancing. Should they like to, you know, come and hang out and spend money? Totally. So um, all my socials across the board are Madison Card. Madison with a T, not a D. My parents did the basic white girl name. Weird spelling thing. We love it. Um, OnlyFans mm-hmm. slash Madison Card. I'm going to be a lot more active on there with my new club. I'm learning new pole tricks. I want you to see them. Uh, if you want to see me in person at the strip club, just slide in my DMs and ask me because I maybe revealed some things on here. Yep. But I also, I have a new podcast that I'm going to come out with as well with, with my ex-girlfriend, which is like the most lesbian thing I could ever do. <laughs> um, and we'll probably get a little bit more political on these sides of things. Um, they mm-hmm. are a former sex worker and they have even crazier stories than me. Sidebar, you should get them on your podcast. It would be amazing. Maybe we could yeah, do a little cross promotion thing. Um, totally. Yeah. yeah, I've, yeah. I've got some short films, some music. I'm working on a lot of stuff outside of the club as well. That's why I'm hustling for the bag. So I have time to make the movies with the clothes yeah. on. So <laughs> <laughs> that's me taking my clothes off so I can keep them on. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, you know, a hustle is a hustle is a hustle. We love the hustle. And, uh, yeah, you're the queen of that, and I and I Thank love you. that. Thanks for thanks for being here again. I'd yes. love to have, you know, when when we get closer to your podcast launching, yeah. like maybe you both can come back or something. Oh, I would love that, or whatever. We'll we'll do something. We'll we'll blow it up. You but need yeah, some lesbian so exes that are both sex workers <laughs> yeah. on your podcast. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, consider it done. Consider <laughs> yes. it done. You heard it here first. Um, awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure as always. Yes. And we will fucking chat again soon about light up Biden butt, butt plugs. So if they're not in production by the next time I talk to you, like, I don't know if we can be friends anymore. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay, I good. Agree. Same page. <laughs> talk soon. Yeah. Big thank you to my guest, Madison Card, for being with me on the show again for the third time. Make sure you go check out everything she is up to on her social media. Go follow her on OnlyFans. Chuck a bunch of money at her for some content. If you guys are loving guests like Madison, you want to see guests like Madison more often, you want to see Madison again, she will be back. You just love sex party and you don't want it to ever go away and you want to show some love and appreciation. How can you do that? Well, if you're listening to this show on platforms like Apple and Spotify, you could leave a rating. You could leave a review. Fuck that, though. Let's be real. What you want to do is you want to make sure you're subscribed so you never miss a brand new episode every single Wednesday, especially if you think that you are subscribed on Apple Podcasts. You might want to go check. Go to Apple Podcasts. Go to Sex Party with Dustin Ribka, upper right-hand corner, tap the button, and and click Resume Downloads. Apple's been unsubscribing people for a while. I don't know what's going on. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. If you're watching on YouTube, I love you. I see you. If you're watching on YouTube, if you go to a strip club and there's an all-you-can-eat buffet, are you eating at the buffet in the strip club? I have to know let me know in the comments. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube and you want to show some love and appreciation, uh, of course, you can like all the videos. Of course, you can comment on all the videos. I love interacting with you guys. But the most important thing you can do, want to take a guess, you want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you never miss a new episode every single Wednesday. Uh, I'm available, as always, the DMs on Instagram. And I will see you all right back here next week thanks for listening the party continues next week click subscribe and let's make this a regular thing follow the show on instagram and twitter at sex party fm follow dustin at dustin ribka